Working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single, preparing the parts and painting. This episode is all about painting. These are the front bogey frames from my 5 inch gauge sterling single and they need another coat of paint. The paint that I'm using here is Phoenix Precision Paints Great Northern Railway Chocolate. I've already painted the side of the frame using a brush and the finish was okay, but now I'm spraying the top coat on. For ease of use, I really like using aerosols and there's a local automotive paint centre who can put the paint into an aerosol can. And this automotive paint company of course also sell paint. And he was saying why am I using this paint and I said because it's very good indeed and it brushes well. I've used paint from this paint company before and tried brushing it and it doesn't brush very well unlike precision paints which is really good paint for brushing. I've always used it for steam locomotive painting and station engine painting and it's very good indeed. Also the colour matches are quite accurate. I'm spraying these test cards at the moment because I'd like to get some paint made up of the correct colour for a test project that I'll be making a video series about shortly. Using a piece of prepared brass plate, I'm going to show and use various etch primers, then I'm going to put the same top coat on all of the etch primer and see how well it sticks to the brass plate. Here are the front wheels of the Sterling Single, and I painted these using a brush in the last episode. So now with an aerosol spray can full of Great Northern Railway Green, I'm just spraying on the top coat. No masking required, I'm just holding the parts with a cloth. I'm only spraying one side of the wheel at a time. That way I can place the wheel in an upright position for the paint to dry and there's no chance whatsoever of the paint running. Generally speaking, I do get quite a good finish and the finish is durable. The paint I'm using in this clip is not precision paints, this is HMG satin black paint. This is the paint that the Steam Workshop use for steam locomotives and it really does look the part and it's very good quality paint. The reason I'm painting this is by way of an experiment because initially I painted it with some paint called High Coat, that's High Coat spelt with a Y, and I was curious to see whether this paint would react with the High Coat, but it didn't and it gives quite a good finish. When painting, preparation is everything. This is the brass cab from the Sterling Single and it's very well made so I'm going to do it justice with a good paint job. Even though this engine is unpainted, it has been run and it's been steamed many times. The absolute first thing to do when painting is to remove any ancillary fittings or any parts that are not fastened to the component that may fall off. I'm taking off the handrails fitted to each side of the cab, and this was more difficult than you would first imagine. On both sides, the bolts holding the handrail in place were quite tight. But luckily, when I took out the lower handrail bolt, which wasn't as tight as the top one, I could rotate the handrail to free off the top bolt. And oddly enough, it was the same at both sides, so I don't really know why this should be. There's a bit of a problem when working on miniature things, which the full size doesn't suffer from, although I suppose it does in scale. If the bolts are too tight on a full size item, you can put enough pressure on, usually to get the bolt off, sometimes having to resort to heat to do this. But if you put pressure on bolts like this, then they're going to break, so a very simple strip down job ends up being a really fiddly repair job. With the handrails removed, it's time to degrease this part. I'm not going to use the parts washer for this, I'm just going to use some panel wipe in a pot. Or should I say, a fairly substantial plastic tub. The cab looks fairly clean, but I'm sure it's not going to be, and we'll find out in a minute how much rubbish comes off this piece of metal. Coal-fired steam locomotives are really good things. I've had a love affair with them for many, many years. But the problem is, the coal and the grit and the ash gets everywhere, into every nook and cranny possible. And what makes it worse is the ash is usually mixed with steam oil, because steam oil is pumped into the cylinders as the engine runs, so this oil also exits the engine with the exhaust steam coming out of the chimney. So don't forget, degrease first before you do anything at the part that you're going to paint. Now that the part is not greasy anymore, I'm going to take out some more fittings. These are good. The bezels that hold the glass have been threaded, and here I'm removing these parts which hold the glass in place. Currently there isn't any glass in here, but there will be either some glass or perspex fitted when the engine's near completion. This is a very well made miniature steam locomotive. Looking closely though at the engine, there are one or two errors that have been corrected very well. This cab, complete with the half round beading round the edge, is silver soldered, which is quite difficult to do. Now I've removed the bezels that hold the glass in place, 
I'm treating this area to a wash down with panel wipe. This combing that fits around the front of the cab is loose. I thought it was fastened to it, but I did wonder why it was slightly crooked. Now I know. I need to refit the cab to the running boards and fit this combing permanently in place when the cab is in the correct position. Thinking about it, I will probably use Loctite 603 for this. All I'm doing at the moment is cleaning it up. In this clip you can see the grade of emery paper that I'm going to be using to score the surface and key it for the paint. I'm also using a piece of Scotch-Brite which also scratches the surface. The scratches left on the metal by the sandpaper or the Scotch-Brite are vital for the paint to key to the metal. After the treatment with the emery cloth, I would think that if you looked at the metal under a microscope, it would quite probably look like a ploughed field, and under higher magnification, it would look like hills and valleys. This is a really boring, fiddly job, and you've got to be quite careful that you don't sand off the rivets, because the rivets are very small, so when it comes to going around the rivets, Scotch-Brite is ideal. I once built a large radio-controlled model of a Spitfire, and this Spitfire was a proper scale model with a highly detailed epoxy glass fuselage. And as I rubbed down the glass fibre fuselage ready for the painting, I removed quite a lot of these rivets. So ever since then, I'm always careful when I'm rubbing down parts for painting. And once again, after the rubbing down process, it's back into the pot of panel wipe, and look what's left in the panel wipe now. Don't forget this started off as a perfectly clean, clear liquid. And this is what's good about panel wipe, it does remove every trace of particles from whatever you're going to be painting. As I said earlier, I'm no expert on painting, but I generally get a good finish. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.